Hello, hello, hello. This is Attorney Mike Gravelin coming to you from Chicago as usual. Sorry, we're a little late. That's all Ben's fault. All my fault. He didn't. He didn't show up till just now. Of course, I forgot to send him the link. We just had this conversation. I forgot to send him the link because he was on with me earlier today. I'm like, I already sent him a link. <laughs> anyway, here we are, Kim Blandino. I don't know. Did you get a chance to look at the video? I did. Yes. I'm actually glad you're here because, uh, like, I get in, in generalities what's going on, but this is intricate. This is a mess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's two cases going on. There's two. There's lots of things going on here. Yeah. Seems like a real sharp it's, judge. Uh, Have you ever been in front of that judge simple. before? Oh, I just lost you. I lost you. Oh, no. All right, you're back uh -oh. now? Yeah, I'm back. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. Have Have you ever been in front of this judge before? Oh, yeah. I like Judge Sacento. He's got uh, he's got a real good demeanor. He's got a real good sense of humor. He's usually pretty funny. You don't, I don't think it will come through necessarily here. He's very serious, and I know this is... Uh, he's but... got a pile of weird issues. Yeah. No, Judge Sacento is a good judge. I, I really like him. Yeah, but he strikes me as a sharp guy. All right, all right. so um, I don't know. Do do we do we warm up? Do we warm up? Let, let's let's warm up a little bit. <laughs> then we'll get into it. This is a little background for people who don't know what we're we're talking about. State of Nevada versus Kim Dennis Baldino, 22 CR 041030. Counsel, sorry to make you wait. I, every road I had had an accident. Morning, Your Honor. I'm, I'm going to stop and explain a little bit on this one. If you want to see it un, yeah, uninterrupted, go over to our Nevada judges. That's where we got it. They're awesome. Give them the views. They deserve it. But I want to lay a little foundation. We are in court. What? what are, we're in justice court, correct, Ben? Correct. Yes. Okay, so this might confuse people. It, it certainly would me if I if I wasn't paying close attention. Um, he's been in front of Judge Levitt the whole time, correct? Correct. That's just our district court. I'm sorry. Yes, that's district court. He's off. You were at the sentencing. You represented him at that time. He's okay. He gets sentenced. He goes off. He gets probation. He he ends up getting some traffic violations which drags him into this court. That doesn't put him back in front of Levitt. That puts him in, in justice court, correct? For the traffic charges, correct. Right. So, And then as a result of being drug in on charges, which is, which is arguably a violation of his probation, which he's arguably not on. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sorry, there's no, un, there's no simple way to say this stuff. This, this is what's happening here in the Kim Blandino case. There's nothing simple with Kim Blandino. <laughs> <laughs> Overly complicated is the order of the day, right? Okay, so that that's just to explain to everybody why we're in front of a different judge or whatever. And, right, and so just, yeah, just a little background. So Justice Court is the court from the county, you know, because I, I, I do give this spiel a little bit to some of my clients just so they understand. So all, um, like, felonies and gross misdemeanors will start out, usually start out in Justice Court. And uh, then they'll get bound over to district court, which is the state court. Okay? okay. And so the justice court will determine if there's probable cause for the defendant to uh, be bound over to face uh, those charges and, uh, and and the jury trial or whatever in, in district court. Um, and uh, but you know they'll they'll um, have uh, jurisdiction over over misdemeanors. And then we also have municipal court. Um, which is where Kim had his original traffic trial was in municipal court, which is the city court. That's like the city's jurisdiction. Okay. So if you're aware, Nevada's a little, or Las Vegas is a little weird. The, uh, the city of Las Vegas, the incorporated city of Las Vegas is, it's a weird looking map. And everything south of uh, Sahara Avenue is like unincorporated Clark County, even though it has a Las Vegas address. So like the strip. That whole right. resort corridor is the county. It's not okay. the city of Las Vegas proper. So if you want to kind of understand some of the jurisdiction here. So he got pulled over 
And so, yes, on the felony charges, this judge will determine if there's probable cause that he should, for example, go to district court on the felony charge. Okay. That's, but that's you'll, yeah, you'll hear later yeah. as to why he, he sort of bifurcate that he has a chance for a, 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 a preliminary hearing, which is what you get for, and we'll, I can explain it later, and a bench trial, because in misdemeanors here, we don't have jury trials. So uh, we just have bench trials for uh, for misdemeanors. And so you'll kind of get that later okay. in, the, in the video here. Just got to explain that. Um, to my law nerds. Mike Dickerson. Yes. State, you have the file? I do not. Okay. Did you talk to Mr. Dickerson? I have not. Uh, I mean, is he coming? Do you know if he's shown up? Um, I was told he was coming. For the record, Mr. Bandino is present in custody. Excuse me, uh, It's Glendino. Glendino, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, uh, I'll call you Mr. Blandino. I'll call it the, the, way, the proper way to call it. Uh, <laughs> any idea? <laughs> it's uh, it. it. too I'm awesome. To get a hold of him. You don't have the file state, right? No. Do you have another place to go to? No, no. Sorry, I know it's more no backed up. No, it's just, no, no. All right, sir, have a seat. We'll get back to you a few minutes as soon as Mr. Dickinson gets here. Sorry to bother you. I've just been informed by the state <laughs> that they have coverage for the land deal. Okay. Matter. You got that one? I have. It. All right, let's recall that one. Dane Nevada oh, versus dear. Kim Dennis Blandino, 22 CR 041030. Mr. Blandino is present in custody. Uh, this was on for two issues. One is he's in custody on a probation hold, regardless of what I was doing. He was still going to be in custody on that, right? And I believe he's still in custody on that matter? Yes, sir. All right. Now, also. Okay, even explain that. He says he's in custody on a probation hold, so that's what Levitt d did at the last hearing. Right. And, and he's, he's saying, in custody. And the judge is saying that's going to be here no matter what I do today. Correct. Right, because the judge can't, yeah, Judge uh, Sacento can't lift that and release him from what that was a big question. That was a big question I had as he was talking about it, but it, like that was my gut feeling, but I wasn't sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, the other issue is, we'd set it for Monday, I understand, that you called and asked for continuation on this matter. I'll grant that because of the matter that you, you had issues that you had to deal with. Thank you very much. Holiday. Uh, so I granted that. Now, we're here for the issue of bail setting and whether or not he's going to represent himself. Anything, uh, there was an argument made last time regarding this. Mr. Dickinson asked for no bail, given the fact that probation. He's currently revoked, well, held on a no, uh, on a probation hold. Um, <laughs> it's, 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 it's kind of bizarre because Mr. Dickerson's uh, his argument is he's actually not on probation because he failed to sign, but he's arguing for a revocation. So it's this kind of bizarre thing. But well, I'm not even that, that. That's that's you know probation is going to have to deal with that. Okay. So I need to deal just with the bail. Here. I like that. He's like, yeah, probably. I want no part of that stuff. Just <laughs> right. <laughs> it is because he's like, normally it would be in a normal case where the person signs their probation right. paperwork. It's a probation hold and they're in there until that probation um, hold gets decided. You know, they don't have a right to bail. They've already pled guilty. The presumption of innocence is gone. So they can they can hold them. For for I don't know I guess for as long as the sentence goes technically, but I mean probably not. I mean they need to have it, um, you know, revocation hearing. But they can hold them for up to a month, six weeks. Usually it's not unusual. I mean sometimes we do that to try and get them into a rehab program or something like that. But so that's what the judge is saying. He's got a probation hold, and then Gerson's like, well, technically they're claiming he's not on probation, so you can't call it a probation hold. And Judge Santos like. All right, I'm just going to deal with what's before me here. <laughs> That's, yeah, translate yeah, that. Like, I, I'm not going to hurt my I'm brain not, with that. No. Yeah, right. I'm not getting into your crap. You can sort that out with Judge <laughs> Levin. That's why she gets paid the big bucks, right? Yep. <laughs> day, Mr. Dickinson's argument was that because he's got a probation hold on probation, he's not entitled to bail. But the statute again and again to confirm that he is entitled to some kind of bail on this. Um, do you want to add anything further, Mr. Because that length some argument. No, Judge, I spoke with Mr. Davis. Okay. Mr. Gerson, anything further? I, just, Your Honor, he, he, I'm sorry, Your Honor. May I uh, please do consult so. my client? Thank you. 
Mr. Gerson, do you need some time? I can pull some other cases if you want some time to talk to him. The trailer right now? Yes. All right. Thank Let me know when you're done so I can get uh, handle some other matters. Oh, of course. Yeah, uh, he just this would have been for, for with his client. The guy's going to call other cases because Kim's good. You, you know. <laughs> yeah, this would have been a nightmare to stream live this morning. I think really, this would have been a lot of starts and stops. It's like okay. yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. kind of nice to have it all. Yes, uh, tip of the cap to Alex over at Art Nevada Judges for putting this together for us. That, that, you're right. This is better this way. Yeah. Sir, have a seat. I'll go back to you in a few minutes. Um, all right. Recalling State Nevada versus Kim Dennis Blandino, 22 Hi, CR 041030. <laughs> Mr. Blandino is present in custody. Mr. Gerstein at this time is representing Mr. Blandino. Mr. Blandino, you requested some additional time to talk to your attorney. Do you speak to him regarding this matter? Yes, please. Oh, no. Okay. My client would like me to stand next to him. Okay. Oh, perfectly fine. Thank you. As I indicated previously, this is two issues before this court. Uh, one is uh, representation uh, by Mr. Blandino representing himself, and two, setting some kind of bail in this matter. State, you have nothing further to add from the last argument that was made last week. No, Your Honor. Defense. Uh, let's see. Your Honor, on the Ferretta issue, I think Mr. Blandino you know, has every right to represent, represent himself in this courtroom. Uh, that's really what he wants to do. I'll be honest with you, I have zero client control, so letting him represent himself is going to move this thing a lot faster. I didn't catch it the first time. I'm zero, I'll be honest, I have zero client control. Oh, we know. We know, brother. Uh, I've been there, Joe. I feel you. I'm surprised. Yeah. I don't think he's got a choice, but I'm surprised. He, he's like, yeah, I, there's no reason under Ferrata that he can't represent himself. Like, he's... I'm sure he doesn't like the idea, but he's just doing what, what his client asked him to do. Right. I mean, it's, yeah, a lot of times you, you got to make arguments that you might not necessarily agree with. Because I can't imagine he would want that. Right. I mean, that would be a nightmare to be standby counsel in one case where he's representing himself and then be the the lead counsel where you're representing him in the probation revocation that would just be a nightmare to yeah well and it's all absolutely so I would, related. there's a huge nexus because right. one, of, one of them's like a probation revocation or or whatever you want to call it with respect to the other so it's not that they're unrelated right uh, yeah so it's yeah it's it's uh, oh oh this is this is fun like so say, nothing is ever simple <laughs> So we, we got a, so we got two questions. The judge is the least onto this. We got two questions. We're going to set you a bond. We're going to, and we're going to decide whether or not you can represent yourself. Correct. Pastor, uh, I will be standby counsel. Mr. Christensen has approved that. So at this time, there's no reason why he cannot represent himself under Ferretta. All right. Uh, On the bail issue, does Mr. Blandino you know, wish to address the court regarding this? Without yeah. talking about the facts of, other, of, yes, your Honor. of the other case. And, and so, this point, your Honor, as far as the bail issue is concerned, if you, if what you're, we're looking at, there's a question of the, the, the seriousness of the alleged issue is lack of insurance and lack of driver's license. That's number one. Number two, he's already <laughs> determined, I'm sorry, registration, Your Honor, I, I apologize, registration, not insurance. Uh, with regard, he's already been determined to be indigent. He, I represent him I, in both his district court case and his direct appeal under the Office of Appointed Counsel. Uh, he has not missed a single, as far as I'm aware, uh, uh, matter. Uh, he, in fact, enjoys coming to the court and addressing the court. So I don't think there's going to be any issue with him not showing up to defend himself uh, against these charges. Uh, Tremendous ties to the community, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And last, I did want to add this, Your Honor, because Mr. Dickerson was bringing this up at the last uh, hearing. He does. He is a caretaker for an elderly uh, woman. Mr. Dickerson <laughs> mentioned how they had sent out well checks, and she was perfectly fine. P.S. She's in the hospital now because fell ill without Mr. Blandino's care. So he needs to get back to be able to take care of her uh, to do that. Anything further? Can I speak to the bail? Only to the, and I say, uh, 
asking you only to speak to the bail matter. I don't want you to talk about the facts of the case at this time. So yes, speak to the you bail issue. The case relative to bail. I don't see him. Just the facts yeah. that are relevant. In He's to the bail. left of the screen is the jury box, and he would be in the, there. That are uh, important to the trial itself or the hearing. Okay, right. Well, uh, have the two factors. We have flight risk, danger to the community. Uh, the fact is that or I don't have any failure to appear as a home. Yeah, um, he's, he might be far away from a microphone. Part of that judge is covering this case. So even if you say it's narcissistic yeah. for me to want to come here, and that's my motivation, fine, you can say that. But it gives me, from that point of view, every reason to appear so I can be on YouTube. <laughs> On this talk now at this moment. So as to uh, OR, I believe OR is totally appropriate. Oh, it's cut off, but I'm missing some of that. He's like, you, you might say it's narcissistic for me to me, me appear, but I want to because it's on YouTube. <laughs> confirming, confirming. Yeah. <laughs> you may think it's of narcissistic of me, but I'm a malignant narcissist. So. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I'll good be lord. There. Uh, there's not <laughs> violence. There's never been any violence in there. That the way Mr. Dickerson, uh, what he, is that Mr. Blandino can't abide by any laws, any rules. This is patent nonsense. He's arguing like a impeaching guy out Man, he's cutting in and out. I wanna, yeah. Uh, between, he, he mentioned the 1994 conviction. And one thing I needed to address relative to that is your concern that you presumed that there was a custody order that was violated. No, 200.359, the pre-October 1993 oh, version Lord. that a person who conceals, detains, or moves a child from another person who claims the right to custody of his, no court order was needed. And I negotiated myself, representing myself, a plea bargain of credit for time served a one day misdemeanor, which is allowed within the statute at that time. God would not let me take that plea bargain. I see the wisdom of it now as to the experience that I got with the law, being able to speak and walk, talk, and chew bubble gum if the court gives permission to chew the bubble gum in the courtroom at the same time. And so the thing is, is that there was no quarter violated. I would never have done it. In fact, and I testified to this. I went to an attorney before I did not re that I took before I took exclusive possession of my kids, and he said it's no crime if there's no court order if you take exclusive possession of your kids. Kid, but that was proven wrong, and so <laughs> did not violate any court orders. Uh, when the court gives me an order, as long as it's understandable. In every possibility to make no. sure that he is understood. Hey, can you pause it? I follow that order. Yeah, there yeah. was a question there. Who was it? Admiralty Court there. If he if he's allowed to represent himself, he would he be able to represent himself in October? No. These are two different uh courts with totally different jurisdiction. So that's what I'm saying. That would be the nightmare scenario for his attorney Joe Gersten to be a standby counsel where he represents himself in justice court and then lead counsel where he's trying to argue uh, his probation revocation case. So yeah, no, that's, yeah. Uh, you know, spoiler alerts, but that's why we got to watch. Yeah, absolutely. And the, the other thing is I will agree with a couple of Kim's arguments and he makes them well. Then he goes on and tries to relitigate his kidnapping charge uh, conviction <laughs> from, from back in the day. But there are two he has two strong things in his favor, and they do work in his favor. He's not violent. Right. And he's not a flight risk. He never misses court. And you you've always been saying it. his new attorney says it right. now. Everybody says it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I've, told, I've, I've, yeah, I kept saying that to him when I was like standby counsel. I was like, "You are," I said, "That's the least of their worries that you won't show up to court." You know, I mean, well, we did have that issue with the mask thing. He wouldn't wear his mask, and he wanted to. He would, you know, when they had to wear the mask to court, but right. But he was always down there, down at the entrance, you know, and making his 
you know, making his appearance known that he was down there and they wouldn't let him in because he refused to wear a mask and all that sort of thing. But yeah, you never miss a court date. But based <laughs> upon those, I mean, the, the two things you want to you want to ensure that they show up to their court dates and, and you also want to weigh the well, it depends on the jurisdiction. But in most you want to weigh, you, you know, danger to society. And I don't think he's a da- I'm being honest. I don't think he's a danger to society. And I think he'll show up to court. Those are two strong things to argue. Yeah, no, he's not violent at all, knowing him like I do. That's he's not. That's not his thing. He'll abuse the court process, right? You know, you know, file all those motions to disqualify judges, blah blah blah. But no, no violence. I mean, we have, that came out in the trial too. Yep. I mean, I you know, I when I cross examined one of those uh, detectives that you know ran the search warrant, I was like, you didn't find any weapons. You didn't find anything that you know would lead you to. You know, right. that he was threatening these judges or had anything plotted, blah, you know, and they all said no. And it's so, I mean, yeah, he's that's not his, his, that's not his, his MO. Shtick, yeah. And as a matter of fact, part of this probation conditions is for me to file no uh, future uh, documents. Uh, yes, okay. Don't, don't, but I'm just saying. Okay, you're okay with that. I just don't want you to get into the yeah. probation issue or yeah, what I'm any is, theories of defense you have in that. Against my will and over my objections, you. Force counsel on me. That's the terminology used. And the other cases along that line. I have force counsel, so I could have. I had a, a motion under Riverside v. McLaughlin. That no, day, he, if you recall. He and does it was take in good care of it. Yeah, that, no, that's, I, that, that with Evie, you think that's legit? Yes, I do. He does take uh, he does take care of her, and yeah, uh, you spend a lot of time with him, and and that's that's for real. Well, that that's interesting. Yeah, I, absolutely. I, I, no, I got that sense too, but I but I'm not there to observe it. You know. Yeah. No. And and the, the um, I know I've used it in in one of them. Um, well, I think in my yeah arguing after he was convicted that. I mean, they when they went to do the house, they did a a wellness check on her, or and and when they did the the, what do you call it? Ran the search warrant. Mm-hmm. So, you know the house it, it's you know the house is clean and and she's well taken care of and that sort of thing well actually that's how he got you know just a little aside here that's how he got i came out you know in the trial is he was talking to them and asked them to go um do a wellness check on her just to check on her so they did and then when they went inside that's when they saw his room with his sort of computer set up as the basis for them getting the search warrant saying hey he's got you know, if you remember from the trial, he had that uh, big right. computer set up and files and stuff. And they're like, you know, his door was open and we could see it. And that was the basis for them getting the search warrant. So, oh, geez. So, yeah, she is well cared for, that sort of thing. I mean, she is, what, 97. So, I mean, yeah. it's got, you know, her health risk. But no, I, I don't think he, he does. And I think he has, there's genuine, um, I don't know what's the word affection. affection. I, mean, I think he affection, yes, for her. I mean, yeah. he does care about her and care for her. Um, oh, that's cool. So yeah, no, I mean, it is one of his, you know, he, you things. know, He's not a monster. I mean, he is, you know, I mean, he is a real person. I don't know, and it's you know, when you only see his obnoxious side coming out here in court, you know, or this sort of thing, it's not hard to dislike him. But you know, he is a real human being and maybe now people won't let i don't know what the chat's saying but you know <laughs> don't humanize him blah, blah, but he is a real person you know, well he's with, been on he's been on yeah, yeah the transport on. thing which we got resolved in jail this was some retaliation from two years ago that was still lingering on my record i'm not high risk transport i don't know uh they, they did say on the kiosk that that got resolved uh that only felony prior to the one that was or this one and now uh, as to the bail one thing that seems to puzzle me in this respect is they made it sound like well I'm not going to get let loose on the the other one the, the parole uh, probation violation so bail isn't an issue that's not true uh, yes, I can I, have I, Georgia I, Peach I you're going to make me blush okay. yeah, you're <laughs> Under the statute. Under Valdez versus Jimenez. No, no, no. Well, Under the statute itself, it yeah. says that you're not entitled to bail unless by order of the court. So that's what we're here for. So and I, think in I don't believe cases, that a no, I'll put on the record, I don't believe that no bail is mandatory. I think OR release under these circumstances 
Is entirely that's rich i mean he does it i mean it's so kim but he just right to the judge he's like no that's statutory and he's like no and he cites the case he's like no it's it's right in the statute <laughs> the yeah. judge is not having it he's not having it don't don't, don't tell me what's in or not in the statute my friend <laughs> you have my word of honor my vow before god that i appear unless it's an act of god that stops me earthquake or dead you know I'll be here. Any further, Mr. Gerson? State for the record, you submit again. All right. Court will note one, two things. We're focused on the bail at this point. I've got possession of documents, personal identification of another category E felony. What it is is that he's walking or driving around with a driver's license. So it's really that he's, he's not trying to pretend to be something else or somebody else or doing that. And then I've got count two. Resident failed to obtain Nevada registration and count three, driving without a valid license, which goes to count one because he believing or may believe that he's got an international license. These are basically traffic men. I would not hold somebody no bail on traffic matters. This could have gone through we 90 days, this becomes not civil infractions, but civil collection. They no longer look to put people in custody. So for this court to look and say, you know, he's got charged with theft, he's on probation. These are traffic. We all get traffic. So I do not believe a no bail. Uh, no bail. I don't believe holding him no bail is appropriate in this matter. Focusing on his criminal history and what's going on so far, I do believe an OR release is appropriate. Under the conditions, I want him to check in once a week, physically check in on ISU. All right? Okay. Well, ISU. What does that mean? Uh, that's just intensive supervision um, is uh, normally though you just you just call it's a call where you call in once a week um, with the um, down at the, the I guess it's the house arrest office or the um, pre-trial he wants, he wants so, to physically show up once once a week yeah that's why I think because normally you just call in I think that's why he made it clear I want him to physically show up he's not gonna make you know, any yeah, friends he, down at that office you know he'll go down there and you know but i mean see he is he is charming you know he get he had a great right. relationship when i was you know on his case with um officer webb i think he's since retired but you know he had a good relationship with him and sort of i want to say got him on his side but uh you know he um officer webb stuck up for him a couple times and there were some faults uh, i know i Oh, in between, also in between uh, his, um, well, after the trial and, be, and in between sentencing, he had some false positives on that he was outside of his area um, and they gave him the benefit of the doubt. So he does, you know, can make friends with uh, some of those people, yeah. but, but yeah, so he's got to go down there, basically down to the first floor of the, the, of the uh, detention center check in once uh once a week although i still don't know how that would work because he's still in custody for the right hold or whatever it is so but that's I really guess... a moot point unless he gets released right um later by judge levitt if he gets reinstated to probation all right so supervision must come to the court and must check in once a week giving these charges being that truly they are just traffic violations even though there's one is, is charged as a felony, category E felony, safety of the community return to court. I think we get that with a check in once. A week. So I'm going to grant an OR release at this time with ISU checking in once a week. Um, that being said, the other issue that we're focusing on is his Feretta canvas, whether or not he has a right to represent himself. Mr. Dickerson provided to this court an order granting state's motion to revoke, revoke defendant's self-representation, which was filed up in district court, signed by, I believe, Judge Levin on this one. I have reviewed this matter. I have seen that there have been numerous motions to disqualify judges, up to 17 motions. It looks like there are just to um, harass in the courts. I do not believe, while I do believe Ms. Blandino is well-versed in the law, could represent himself adequately and, and maybe even uh, exemplary, uh, I do have a problem with his use of motions to withdraw, uh, remand, or I'm sorry, disqualify judges. It seems that every time a judge looked at the case, 
Motions to disqualify were filed, including judges who hadn't even been assigned to the case. So, looking at his past history and... Oh, you know that motion to disqualify him is incoming right now. Yeah, well, see, that's, you know, the problem. He can't represent himself, so it's like, you know, he would have had... Of course he would have had a motion to <laughs> disqualify Judge Sacento. I Of course he would have. I mean, that, I mean, you heard him including judges that weren't even assigned to your case like i've just, yeah i'm disqualifying judge waffner and judge judy yeah right <laughs> right i mean come on and representing yeah. himself i feel that there is more of an attempt to uh, harass the court the court proceedings and the court process and i do not believe at this time that it is in mr baldino's or the court's best interest to have him represent himself i do not believe that it is an attempt to represent himself with the best interests other than to harass the courts, the DAs, or the proceedings. So based on that, I'm denying his motion for representation of himself. I am going to order Mr. Gersten to continue representation on the matter. You have every right to file a motion to, uh, to appeal this issue. You have every right to do so. That is the court's order. I'll set it prelim. Do you want a prelim and trial, or you want to go prelim, then set a trial later on? Do you want a prelim within 15 days? Well, if we're getting an OR, Your Honor, I think that you want to. He's got a right to, he's got to consult, consult with your client before you make that decision. So, Gersten, he, did, did he appoint him or did he? Yes, so he basically confirmed him as counsel, saying, You, um, yes, Kim can't represent himself. I find that based on his, this other, uh, you know, Judge Levitt's order in his other case, to seeing from his actions, that he yeah files frivolous motions or abuses the process whatever he said that i'm going to deny him his uh deny him the right to represent himself and i'm yeah I'm gonna confirm I, i'm just kind of interested too this is sort of inside baseball but like since you're in justice court as opposed to what circuit court is is it like a different thing like does the check for re the representation come from a different place no no so it's all um they changed this about, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, maybe more now. I'm not sure. Um, the uh, They have what's called the Office of Appointed Counsel. And mm -hmm. so um, that's, I think you referenced Drew Christensen. He's the man that runs it. And okay. so he's the one that will assign. So if the public defender has, uh, and, uh, has a conflict, he appoints people. He uh, There are like, um, they're called what's called a track. And so every justice court has three attorneys and I have one, for example, here. And so we're just sort of permanently there um, when the public defender has a has a conflict. If there's multiple defendant cases, for example, we'll get one of the co-defendants and that sort of thing. And then there's others that, yeah. So like, you know, was it three years ago, Drew Christian called me and said, hey, have you ever been standby counsel? And it's like, no, he's like, well, I got a good case for you. I think you'll like it and you know, blah, blah, blah. And, <laughs> Here I am three years later, right? And so, yeah, so he's history. the one that, so yeah, it is the same. It's Office of Appointed Counsel, even though, yeah, technically the district court is the a state court of, you know, state of Nevada. It's all run here by, uh, through the county and the Office of Appointed Counsel through right. the, um, and so what they're deciding is, uh, See, because he's got two issues here. One is I'd rather you know on this one. So he's out on this one. So I can set on the felony because there are two different states. Okay, what were we saying? Yeah, so what he's explaining is since he has um, the misdemeanor trials, we don't have uh, jury trials for misdemeanors here in Nevada, except for okay. uh, DV cases now. There was a Nevada Supreme Court a few years ago. But other than that, it's all bench trials for misdemeanors. So um, the purpose of the bench trial is to obviously determine guilt or innocence. You know, and the judge is the finder of fact. But the, in, a, in a felony, in justice court, all they determine is probable cause, right? So Oh, we lost you. You there? Yeah, you're, back? I, I, you, you're, okay. you're back. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. So um, the 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 preliminary hearing is only to determine if there's probable cause.
for him to be bound over, that there is probable cause for him basically to face uh, a jury trial on the felony charge, which is the what that uh, possession of false ID or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. So your strategy is different. Usually at um, at, a, at a preliminary hearing, and well, yeah, there's I can't I don't think there's ever been any defendant that testifies. That's like malpractice basically, because obviously the state's going to present their evidence, and if you get up and refute it, have your client or some other witnesses say, well, no, it's not. One, you're tipping your hand as to potential strategy, and you're basically guaranteeing that the court, the case is going to go to a jury trial because, you know, if they're getting up and saying it's ABC and we say, no, it's XYZ, well, that's like exactly what a jury is for to determine what's true or not, it's right? Fact, so you yeah. don't want, so, so, but since a bench trial is to determine guilt or innocence, you might want to have your defendant testify, be, right. you know, just to say, yeah, you know, I, in fact, I am an Israelite or whatever it is, you know, right. And, or I, I was registered, but at a at a at a, uh, at a preliminary hearing, you wouldn't want to have the defendant ah, testify. So that, that's why why splitting them out. Correct. Very cool. Just so we're all clear, that might be a little law nerdish or inside baseball, <laughs> but just so you why he's like making such a big deal as to, you know, do yeah. you want me to split these or have these on different days, that kind of thing. He may or may not want to testify at the preliminary hearing. He has to waive the right. But he's got a right and the last right to testify at a trial. So I want to kind of bifurcate him because I don't want to exclude his right to, you know, to decide not to testify at the prelim, but he's got a right to testify at the trial, but they're going to overlap. So I want to separate those two out. So uh, what do you want to do on the, on the uh, category one, uh, count one, on 15 days or not? That's only for the felony. <laughs> Dear. <laughs> with your client, with your attorney, yes, sir. Not with the court at this time. The court's made a ruling. I'm just looking for an issue regarding the setting of the trials. Have a seat. We'll get back to you in a few minutes. All right. State of Nevada versus uh, Jim Dennis Blandino, 22 CR 041030. This is time set for this is for us to set the preliminary hearing and or trial. Yes, Your Honor. We'd like to set both the preliminary hearing and the trial in the ordinary court. All right. Uh, Mr. Blandino, you understand you have a right to have a prelim within 15 days. You're waiving your right to have the prelim within 15 days. You have a right to have a trial within 60 days. You're waiving your right to have the trial within 60 days. You're not waiving your right to the trial or the prelim. You're merely extending it out. You understand? I understand that, Judge. Do you I'm agree with that? Is, if, if you are representing myself, I wouldn't waive. But I understand that. Counsel on me, I have to value by his, my, he's my guardian. If I was representing, my, representing myself, I wouldn't waive. Uh, well, you're not. Uh, so for our purposes today, <laughs> Yar. Oh, good yes. Lord. I agree with Maria. All judges should mispronounce his name just for the, <laughs> for the laugh. Because you know it bugs him. Oh, gosh. Uh, what did he say in the uh, beginning? I didn't even notice it. It sounded like he was saying it right to me. I think he called him Baldina instead of oh, Blandina. Okay. Oh, okay. That's wrong. <laughs> All right. And you agree with the continuation at this time, right? Extending it out, correct? Well, I, I object to you denying me counsel. Uh, you have every right to do so. You have every right to file an appeal on this matter. The oh, court has set forth the reasons why after reviewing the motion. I know I'm not filing an extraordinary judge okay. because the appeal doesn't, right. doesn't need to You have every right to do so. I'm just focusing right now, just setting the trial date and previous I understand that. And I'm not, but you, my position has to be, if I represent any myself, <laughs> I would not waive that 15 days, but since you're forcing counsel on me, I no other option. You're giving yes, me Bob, I'm missing choice, judge. like a right. All right, state is uh, set prelim in 15 days or uh, 14 days on this matter. So count one. That date will be October 12th at 9:30. And set a trial within. I'll accept it in the ordinary course. I'll accept it in the All ordinary right. course. I'm going to give you time to go over this. <laughs> I will defer to the defendant as to the, the although the state has a right to request a prelim. I don't believe this is a 
situation where we need to invoke the state's right to hearing within yeah. a certain time. So, step three of the ordinary up. course is right. one, that date will be. November 17th at 9.30. And let's go sometime after that for the trial on counts two and three, that date will be. December 1st at 9.30. Um, Thank you. I relied upon the order granting state's motion to revoke defendant's self-representation that was signed back and filed back on December 27th. Part of the record, court exhibit. It will not be able to be viewed by anybody else. I, mean, I, I believe it's a public record anyway. But the court did rely upon that, so I am making it part of the record. So it is in the record when you file your appeal. This will also be there that you'll be able to rely upon that issue, uh, the, the, the court review. All right? Thank you, All right. See you Thank back you. here on that day. Oh, well, there you have it. How about that? Do you have any so, predictions? Well, you know, Judge Sacento just treated this like it was, well, this is just traffic matters, you know? I'm not right. going to, you know, so I'm going to give you the R. I mean, it did make him do the intensive supervision. If it hadn't been, you know, if Kim didn't have all his other, you know, I don't know, all the other baggage, I, you know, he would just been a straight OR, I'm sure. Um Yep. So it's it's you know it depends. I mean, if if I mean I could see it really going either way, you know, because Judge Levitt, like I say, she's been very patient, but I gotta think at some point, you know, her patience is gonna run out. But I mean, on the same thing, she's gonna look. These are traffic matters, you know. Sign the paperwork yep. and just get back on probation. All right. I could see that, you know. But man, she didn't let him out. And, uh, you know, I mean, she does have options too. I mean, she can, she can say, look, you're in violation. You didn't sign, you picked up a traffic, you know, you picked up new charges. Yep. I'll reinstate you with probation, but I'm going to give you 60 days as a condition, you know, I'll reinstate you after 60 days in, in custody, perhaps. I mean, so there's all, there's all sorts of ways that could go, or she could just say, no, uh, you, you, you know, you picked up a felony charge. That's enough. Go to prison for whatever the sentence was. I I think so. I, I, I think know. Gersten could get him out, and we'll try to work this deal, and it won't happen. It's so simple. He's got to sign the probation agreement, right? And he's got to plead guilty to the no registration and no license. And and part of the deal is, you don't get revoked. You stay out of jail, but you got to plead guilty to these. And I don't think he'll take it. I don't think he'll take it. <laughs> this well, this theoretical deal does not exist. I'm not. I'm not saying. I I could just see yeah. him being that blind. I mean, you know, having registration is a pretty, you know, it's a cut and dry issue. It's it either is. the car, the vehicle is registered or it's not registered. This isn't like. Yes, I came to a complete stop at the stop sign or, right. you know, I mean, there's no, there's no gray area in your car is registered or it's not registered. Right. Um, so, you know, what are you going to do? So I don't know. He but, might go uh, full self sit. He, uh, he hadn't before, but he might, he might, because that's the only thing available to you. Just saying, no, I know that the, 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 uh, law requiring registration is wrong. That, I mean, that, that you can make that legal argument. It's, it's wrong. But, yeah. But he's represented by counsel. So, you know, now you right. got, so I don't know that he, he can, they've sort of clipped yeah. his soft sit wings as it were. Um, but oh. hey, I did see earlier you do need merch, a coffee mug here, whatever that says zero client control. Whoever said that? that was, <laughs> that's my kids. You know, they ask if you have merch. Well, I do, but zero. Like, well, I got this like, one right here. This one right here. We're not one hundred percent fraudery. Okay. But zero client control battery. is good. That is, that is fantastic. And it was fun to watch you laugh about it because you're like, oh, I've been there. <laughs> yeah, I can. Been there, done that. I haven't gotten a t-shirt though, so yeah, I need a t-shirt now. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to work zero that out. Zero client control. <laughs> I didn't know All you right. had merch. Yeah, my kids were asking. They know I've been on, and they, I, yeah. that's. Uh, you know, it's funny, a little aside, my, uh, my kids, they went to, this is a, like two years ago, 
my wife took him to 7-Eleven and the guy was in like a 7-Eleven t-shirt and one of my <laughs> my twins was like oh cool i didn't know 7-Eleven had merch because the guy was in like a 7-Eleven <laughs> shirt and he was like he wanted to get a 7-Eleven they love 7-Eleven getting slurpees and he wanted well, a yeah, yeah 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 the slurpee shirt. yeah so oh, yeah well. that's that's good Got stuff. a good job to get that merch <laughs> so all right yes. well thank you for coming by that was that was fun and you know what yeah we were both disappointed because we wanted to, to do this live this morning but you're right it worked out better because there there were of yeah. course there were like huge gaps in there because you know he had to right. confer with kim in the middle <laughs> i know it's like all right let's trail this and we'll call yeah all the other stuff but yeah it's just this is crazy all right, cool. Well, thank you for coming on. Thanks, everybody, for coming out, and I will see you all soon. All right.